Exodus chapter 33, verse 18 and 19. It says this, Moses responded, then show me your glorious presence. Another translation says, show me your glory. Say that with me. Show me your glory. Verse 19, the Lord replied, I will make my goodness, everybody say goodness, pass before you and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before, before you. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for this moment. Lord, thank you for the word that's about to be deposited into our hearts, Lord. Father, I give you all the glory and all the praise. Thank you, God. Right now, Lord, I, I decrease so that you can increase. I step back so that you can step forward, God. Father, Father, less of me and more of you. Speak to our hearts. Now, God, I take authority in the room. And in the name of Jesus, if there's any obstacle, if there's any stubbornness, if there's any pride and arrogance that's stopping people from receiving, I bind it in the name of Jesus. And Father, I, I break that stronghold and I say now, Lord, let us be free to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. You may be seated today. 20, 2023 is the year of glory. Everybody say glory. It, it, glory. I love that word. It's a great word. It's a great, it's, it's, our, it's our theme for the year. It's the year of glory. It's a year where life, life way will be marked by the glory of God. And we learned last week that the word glory means the revelation, the, revel the manifestation. When God manifests himself to his people, when he, he becomes more than just a concept, more than just a thought, more than just an idea. But God r literally becomes real. He becomes real to his people. He manifests himself. You know, for almost 16 years or over 16 years of my life, you know, I knew God. I knew of God and I knew of Jesus and I had Jesus in my heart. But I had, never, I had never experienced the presence of God, never experienced the glory of God. And the day that I experienced the glory of God and the presence of God, it changed me forever. It, it, he wasn't just an idea in my mind. He wasn't just something that I read out of a book, but he became real to me, as real as you are. And that's what glory means. It's when the, God reveals himself to us and, and the weight of who he is, the influence of who he is, the heaviness of, of the presence of God comes upon us. And, and, you know, that's, that's what we're experiencing. Some of you were here you know, just a moment ago, and you're like, oh, my, what's going on in this room? What's, what's that that I'm feeling? What am I sensing? And some of you came in, you don't even, you've never felt anything like this before. And, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's foreign to you. In other words, it's not familiar to you. But you're like, but this is something that I need. You know what that is? It's called the glory. Everybody say glory. It's the glory of God. It is the, the weight of who he is. And that's, that's what 20, 23 years for LifeWay. I believe it's the, it's the year of glory, where the glory of God is going to impact our lives in so many ways that it's going to leave a lasting effect all over us. Amen? In every aspect of our lives. And so just to review very quickly, last week we learned that, that we, we talked about Moses, and Moses had this encounter with God. And we learned that Moses' life was marked by trauma. Like his life was marked with trauma. There was a lot of trauma in his life. And, and it was a lot of hardship that happened on his life. And so here he comes into the presence of God, and, and, and he's got trauma on him. He's, he's insecure. He's angry. He's, uh, he's been abandoned. He's been, he's been violent. There's a lot of trauma on his life. But, but on his life, he comes into the presence of God, and all of a sudden, the glory, he, he comes to the, the presence of God and he says, God, show me your glory. In other words, he wants more of God, more of who he is. And so then when God reveals himself to him, the Bible says that his life was changed by the glory of God. Listen, I don't know what you're going through today. Some of you have gone through some very, very difficult times. I know that as a nation, we've gone through some, and we're still going through difficult times Shoot, I went to the grocery store this week, and I wanted a dozen eggs, and it cost me an arm and a leg. I had to pull out my credit card. Come on, somebody. For eggs. I mean, we're, we're going through some hard times, and that's the least of it. Some of you have gone through traumatic events. You've gone through, through events where you've lost a loved one, where, where maybe you lost a parent or a child or whatever the case may be, and it's, it's marked you. And I, and I want you to know that today you're at the right place at the right time. You're not here by accident. God has something for you. Can I get an amen? Come on, I said God has something for you. How many of you believe that? 
And so I want us to, to dive into this exchange with Moses and God, and I want us to see what more can we learn from this, this moment. What can we learn from this exchange between God and Moses? And so here, here's what I want to do right now. I want to give you three things for you to think on. Here's point number one. Number one, Moses recognized his need for God's glory. He recognized his need for the glory of God. Listen to what it says in verse 18. It's up here on the screen. It says this, Moses responded, then show me your glorious presence. Show me your glory. Say that with me. Show me your glory. Now, I know we touched on it last week, but it bears repeating this week, and I want us to apply it in a different way. You know, last week we talked about how Moses, you know, had this bold request to God. You know, and the way, the best way I can describe that is, has your, has your kid or maybe you, have you ever had something that you requested that was just outrageous? Or for your kid, a seven-year-old, right, six-year-old, right, they come, it's, it's, it's going to be their birthday. And you're like, you're thinking, you know, you're thinking something from Walmart or Target. Come on, somebody. Target, right? You're, you're thinking about something like that. And they're like, all of a sudden, they, they have a printout, right, from Pinterest. And they say, here's, here's my wish list. You're like, child, <laughs> you crazy. So outrageous. That's, that's what Moses' petition to God was. It, was. it was outrageous. It was crazy. It was bold. It was audacious. And he says to God, show me your glorious presence. We, we, knew, we knew that he wanted more of God, but why? Why did he want more of God? Why is it that he was saying, God, I need more of you? I, listen, we're, we don't need more church necessarily. And church isn't bad. We don't need religion, right? We don't need more pastor. You don't need more of George, right? Rosie can only handle so much of this. Come on, somebody. You don't need more of this. You, we all need more of God, not less of God. And we're living in a time where, where they're trying to push God out of everything that we do. And they want, to, they want to confine God to a closet. They want to confine God to your personal uh, house. And you keep God, keep your religion, keep your faith, keep all that to yourself. Don't push it on me. I'm not going to push anything on anybody, but I can't help if the glory of God is on me and it goes wherever I go. I can't help if I take the glory of God to the neighborhood. I can't help if God's glory is on me and God's glory begins to touch people. I don't need more of church. I need more of God. And so why did Moses need more of God? Here's, here's why I believe one of the reasons Moses needed more of God is because his assignment his assignment to lead God's people was a difficult one. Now, listen, I remember the first time my wife and I, we decided that we were going to take our kids to Disney World. And they were, I think our oldest one, Faith, was I think about eight at the time or ten. I can't remember how she was. But we had Micah, who was not even two yet. And, and Micah was all over the place. And the thought of putting Micah on an airplane for four hours, right, where Micah could not sit still, and, 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 and Rosie was out of control. <laughs> no, she wasn't. But we get the, the idea of having four kids is kind of like herding cats. Right? It's like a difficult, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult task. Right? Now think about this. Four kids. He's got hundreds of thousands of people that he has to lead out of Egypt and into the promised land. And he's like, I can't do this. This is too hard. These people are rebellious. These people are stubborn. These people don't listen. They complain. They're grouchy. They're grumpy. They're, all, they're, they're demanding. Come on, they're condescending. They're always trying to take me out. And these are the people that, God, you've called me to lead. I can't do this on my own. So, God, show me your glory. The, 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 the assignment, the task was so hard that he comes to the Lord and he says, God, if you'll show me your glory, I think I know I'll be able to do what you've asked me to do. And so maybe you're here today and you say, well, God's not asked me to lead anybody out of Egypt, right, and into the promised land. God's not asked me to lead anybody out of Goodyear or Buckeye and into Prescott. God's not asked me to be a leader like that. But maybe God has asked you to do something difficult. Maybe God is asking you to do something difficult that you're not able to do. Can I, can I give you a couple of things that maybe God is asking you to do? And you consider this. How many of you know that sometimes God asks us to forgive people that we don't want to forgive? Right? That's a hard task, isn't it? 
It's a hard assignment to, to forgive the person who's betrayed you, to, for, to forgive the person who's been unfaithful to you, to forgive the person who has lied to you, the person who's gossiped about you, the, the person who has stolen from you, the person who has done things that have damaged you and hurt you. And, and you have every right to be upset. You have every right to be hurt. You have every right to be disappointed. And then God shows up and he says, hey, 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 I want to speak to you. Yes, God, what do you want? I want you to forgive. What? What do you, what do you mean, God? Forgive. How many of you know that forgiving Someone that's hurt you, betrayed you, lied to you, stolen from you, been unfaithful to you, whatever. How many of you know that it's hard to forgive a person like that? Because everything in our nature is saying, get even, get even, get even. And you don't want to know what that does? Is it that, that, that posture, that posture in your heart, it becomes a poison to you. And God is saying, I want you to forgive. Forgive the person who's neglected you. Forgive your father who wasn't there for you. Forgive your mother who was abusive. Forgive your uncle who took advantage of you. Forgive that person who, who, who maybe even, God forbid, sexually abused you. And you're like, no, no, they, they, they need, I need justice. And they will get justice. But what God is asking you to do is to forgive. It's hard, isn't it? See, right now I'm talking about this, and some of you are clamping down. You want to know why? Because the enemy has used it to be a stronghold in your life. And this is why you haven't progressed in your life. This is why you're never happy. This is why you don't walk in peace. This is why you don't walk in freedom, because you're holding on to things that's weighing you down. you got to forgive. I don't know what's harder, leading people out of Egypt and into the promised land or forgiving the person that hurt me. See, do you, do you feel in the room? Everything just got real. <sighs> and God wants to, the glory of God comes on you, and you wonder what happens. All of a sudden, what you couldn't do before, you can now do. The person you couldn't forgive, now I can forgive. The per person that you couldn't let go of, like, like in a sense of like, uh, I'm going to get even. Now all of a sudden your heart has changed. What changed? The presence of God. Or how about, how about it's not just forgiving a person, but, but how about maybe God's asking you to give up an addiction? Huh? You, know what's, you, know what's, you know what's, you know, uh, crazy about, you know, the, the, the time we're living in right now? The time we're living in right now is that a lot of things that used to be illegal are now legal. Come on, somebody. Now, now it's, it's okay. It's, it's completely legal to have the munchies. Give me that brownie. <laughs> Write that prescription. You don't even need the prescription anymore. Right? Come on, somebody. There's a lot of things that used to be illegal that are now legal. So now people go, well, pastor, this is legal now. What's wrong with it? It's legal. It's okay. As long as it's under 2.3 ounces. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And so watch this. But maybe that thing isn't good for you. Maybe that drink isn't good for you. Maybe that alcohol isn't good for you. Maybe those pills aren't good for you. Maybe that thing that you've been token up a little bit isn't good for you. Hello, somebody. And you're like, no, 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 God's okay with it. I don't need to get rid of it. It's been part of my life. See, that's what we call a stronghold. It's got a stronghold on your life. <laughs> It, has, it hasn't done anything to you except make you hungry and make you out of control. Hello. But, but, but pastor, there's nothing wrong with this. And, and I, you know, I've got it under control. No, my friend, the thing has you under control. It has control of you. You know how when you have an addiction, you know how you, you want to know when it's an addiction? When you're fighting it with God. When you're justifying it with God. No, 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 God. No, 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 no. You turn water into wine, Lord. And thank you for turning this into Corona. <laughs> Listen, if God wants you to have a Corona, put a glass of water on the table and ask him to turn water into Corona. And if he doesn't, then you know he doesn't want you to have it. Come on, somebody. 
Yo, Pastor, see, now some of you, now watch. You, you want to know what's the dangerous thing about this is? Can I tell you? Is that you can have enough religion in your life to get legalistic. Like you can have enough religion to go, oh, the Lord says that all things are, are accessible to me. Yeah, but it also says not all things are profitable. Don't pick and choose, my brother and my sister. Come on. Come on, somebody. I'm not, I'm not talking about legalistic here. I'm not trying to legalism. I'm just talking about what is, God, what is God working on your life? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Is, see how this is hard to give up? Here's another one. How about, how about if God is asking you to surrender a relationship? Come on. But I love, but I love him, Pastor. But is he God's man for you? Come on. How about lady, la- ladies? Ladies, is he the one? Is he drawing you closer to Jesus? Is he a spiritual leader? Is he responsible? Is he a man after God? I could flip the script as well. Does, does she glorify God more than she worries about her looks? Does she glorify God more than she worries about herself? Is she a woman after the heart? Because I tell you what, if that, if that person isn't searching after God, can I tell you something? If, if that person isn't searching after God, they will be a weight that holds you down. Well, I'm going to win them to Jesus. Well, win them to Jesus first. <laughs> then come and talk to me. We got missionary dating. <laughs> I'm going to win them to Jesus, Pastor. I'm naming it. I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. Right? But, but what happens, honestly, let's be honest here, you start developing those relational ties, and it's hard. And now, but I love him. But you, God never sanctioned that relationship. He never said this is the one. You did. Hello. Y'all are like, yeah. <laughs> All the married people are like, yeah, I'm glad I'm past that. <laughs> I am glad I'm past that. Praise Jesus. I don't have to worry about the one. God gave me the one. How about, how about taking a step of faith? Maybe God's asking you to take a step of faith. Maybe God's asking you to say, to commit to, commit to a, a local church. So he's asking you to commit to, to, to getting involved in ministry, to serving. Maybe God's asking you to give extravagantly, to give like you've never given before. Guys, I'm telling you, next week when you show up to the church, when you come next Sunday, some of you are going to be shocked to see what's, what's happened. I'm telling you, next Sunday, you're going to drive up. You're like, oh, my goodness, what happened? And I'm not talking about the trees they cut down over here, which, which let me pause for a moment. Thank you to all the men who showed up yesterday who cut down those trees. Can we give it up for the guys? Thank you. But I'm not talking about that. You're going to drive up and you're like, whoa, all these years we've been praying and believing. And all of a sudden, we're going to see something and you're going to be like, wow. And then in another two weeks, wow. And so you're going to see this, this facility, and you're going to go, wow. And then I'm going to say, it's time to give, and, you're, and it's time for you to go, wow. <laughs> give extravagantly. Don't be stingy. Don't be greedy. Right? Maybe I don't know what it is that God's asking you to do, but... but All I know is that I can't do it without God. I can't forgive without God. I can't quit that addiction without God. I can't surrender that relationship without God. We can't do that. There's no way we can do that. We can't give extravagantly. We can't take that step of faith without God. And so I believe that Moses was saying, show me your glory, because he was saying, listen, God, if you're with me, I can do what you call me to do. If you're with me, I can do everything that you've called me to do. Can I can I give you a Bible today? Can I give you some Bible scriptures? Here's some Bible scriptures. Here it is. Ready? Philippians 4.13 says this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Matthew 19.26. Jesus said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Genesis chapter 18 verse 14 says this. Is there anything too difficult for the Lord? Job 42.2 says this. I know that you can do all things. Romans 8.31 says, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? Psalms 18.29 says, in your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall. Somebody give God praise that with God, all things are possible. You see, with God's glory on my life, I can accomplish all that God has set before me. With God. 
There's nothing that I can't do. With God, there's nothing that I can't accomplish. With God, I can do the impossible. You want to know why? Because when I get into the presence of God, when I, get, when I experience the glory of God, I come out from that experience believing that everything is possible. Why? Because when I get into the presence of God, I get God's perspective. I, there was a, I don't have the picture of it up here, but there was a meme I saw recently on social media. And it had a picture of a little kitten, little kitten, cute little kitten. Have you ever noticed that kittens are cute, but then they get bigger and they get become cats? And cats aren't so cute sometimes, right? I have a cat at home. He's got a flat face. He's, he, he's, he's, he does. Rosie smacked him one day really hard. No, I'm playing. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a flat-faced cat, right? Flat, don't, uh, Peter. I'm just joking, okay? Just joking, Peter. All right, send your emails to idontcare at gmail.com. Anyway. But check this out. So, so in, in this picture, it says, here's a little kitten, cute little kitten. It says, and, and it says, how I enter into the prayer. I, I go in like a kitten. But when I come out of prayer, it had an, a picture of a lion. So when I come into the presence of God, I come in like a, a meek, humble little kitten. Like, you know, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> come on. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, meow, 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 meow. Come on, say that. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. Some of you, I bet you, Rain is like, I ain't saying meow, meow. <laughs> sorry, Rain, I'm sorry. You don't have to say that. Yeah. But you come in like a little meek little kitten. You're like, you're like, oh, little cute. But then you come out of the presence of God, and you come out like a roaring lion. You come out strutting. Why? Because everything changed in the presence of God. What seemed impossible now becomes possible. He said, I could never. He said, I could always now, right? Why? Because you got God's perspective. How many of you know that from God's perspective, everything is smaller than God? Every mountain, every difficulty, every crisis, every challenge, everything is smaller than God. That's why I need the glory of God in my life. I need His glory and that's why I say to God, show me your glory. Look at your neighbor and say, show me your glory. Come on, say that. Come on, show me the glory. Here's number two. You ready? Here's number two. God responds to Moses. Listen to what it says in verse 19. Then show me your glorious presence. Here it is, verse 19. The Lord replied. Say that with me. The Lord replied. We, we look at that verse, and I don't want us to overlook that. The Lord replied. Because some of you, you've been crying out to God for things for a long time, and you don't think God has heard you. And you're upset, and you're disappointed, and you're discouraged. Because you think, God, I've been praying for my kid. I've been praying for my relationship. I've been praying for that job. I've been praying for that miracle. I've been praying for my family. I've been praying for this, and, and nothing has happened. And you feel like God has forgotten about your situation. You feel that God has forgotten about your request. And you've been saying, God, when are you going to answer? I want you to know, I want you to hear this today, that no matter how long you've been waiting and no matter when you prayed this prayer, you have to know that God heard you and that the Lord has replied. I wish I could tell you that, well, you know what, God's, God is going to reply instantly. I wish I could tell you that God is going to, by tomorrow morning when you wake up at 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock or 4 o'clock, whatever the time you wake up to go to work or go to school, by that time, the answer is going to be manifested and it's there. I wish I could tell you that that was the fact, but I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know how, I just know that he does. The Lord replied. The Lord has heard, somebody needs to hear that today. Everybody look at me, everybody look at me. Listen, you have been crying out to God, and I want you to know something. God has seen your tears. God has heard your cry, and he has replied. But don't let your impatience get in the way. Don't let your impatience hold you back. Don't let your impatience, listen, cause you to give up. Don't allow your impatience to, say, to cause you to say, I quit. You say, well, my son hasn't changed yet. My kids haven't changed yet. I haven't changed yet. My situation hasn't changed yet. And my marriage is still the same. And if, if I'm honest, it's actually getting worse. And my family's getting worse. And my financial situation is getting worse. And every, listen, God has replied. Matthew chapter 
7 verse 7 says this. It says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Does that not sound like a God who answers our cries? I like what it says in Psalms 34, verse 4 through 8. It says this in the, in the message translation. It's a little bit different. It says this, God met me more than halfway. He freed me from my anxious fears. Look at him. Give God your warmest smile. Never hide your feelings from him. When I was desperate, I called out, and God got me out of a tight spot. God's angels set up a circle of protection around us while we pray. Open your mouth and taste, and open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are you who run to him. God answers prayer. Can I get an amen? amen. He answers prayer, but, but here's the thing is, Sometimes, right, God doesn't answer immediately. You want to know why? Because sometimes God uses the time in between he heard our cry and replied to it to the moment we saw the answer. Those, those are two different moments. Listen, sometimes you, God uses that time between point A and point B to build something in you. I mean, think about this parent. What, what, what good would you be doing for your child if every time they ask for something, the moment they asked for it, you immediately gave it to them. What would you be creating in them? You, would be crea you wouldn't be creating necessarily a grateful child. They could be. I don't know. But can I tell you what you'd be creating? You'd be creating a spoiled child who doesn't maybe value what it takes for you to work so that you can get what they've been asking for. You want to know what's developed in that time period? It's something that we call character. Something is being formed in us. Character. Your kid comes to you. I mean, if it were for Micah, if it were for my son, my youngest son, my youngest son is 12 years old right now. Do you know how long he's been asking me for a Corvette? Do you know how long he's been asking me for a Ferrari, a Lambo? He's been asking me. He's like, oh, he knows how to ask for big things, right? Oh, he sure does. But it's a responsible parent isn't going to give him those things. Now, if he gets older and he does well, then he can get one for his dad. <laughs> but what happens is they don't have the maturity and the character to be able to get what they ask for all the time. And so what happens is you cry out to God. God heard your cry. Follow me here. He heard your cry. But guess what he's doing? He is working in you, and he's building fortitude in you. He's building character in you. He's building faith in you. All those things. So when you do finally get it, you're able to handle it. Are you following me? It's kind of like you're at LifeWay. Do you know how long we've been praying and believing God for a building? It's embarrassing to mention. For me, honestly, it's like we've been on this since 2017. God, we need a new building. God, we need a new building. God, we're raising money for a building. God, we, built, we bought plants. We got plants. We went to the county. All the, and nothing, and nothing. And then COVID, and it just set us back another two or three years. And just when we thought we were about to do it, you know, COVID hit, and it just set us back. And I'm like, it's, it's almost embarrassing for me to say, hey, guys, uh, we're just waiting on this building thing. And, and, and it's like, here we are seven years later. God heard me when we, we prayed about it in 2017. People started giving to it back in 2017. So how come it's a 2023? It's because it's God's time. It's not my time. But you know what God showed me? He showed me this. George, if you would have built that building back in 2017, you didn't have the leadership able to sustain all the people that would have come. You weren't ready to handle all the people. And you know what we've been doing the last several years? We've been making disciples and building leaders. And guess what? When the three, 400 come extra and we have six, 700, 800, 1,000 people, we're going to have the team ready in place to be able to take care of them. Come on, somebody give God praise today. We're going, to be able to, we're going to be able to build that school. We're going to be able to have that Bible college. We're going to be able to do those things that God has said. Why? Because he's been building fortitude in us. He's been building character in us. He's been building the leadership in us. See, some, God heard my cry, but sometimes I just got to be patient. Can I tell you something? God has heard your cry, and he has replied, you just got to be patient. Look at your neighbor and say, be patient. Mm. Here's the last one. Are you ready? Here's the last point. 
the goodness of God was revealed to Moses. Listen to what it says in verse 19. I will make all my goodness. Everybody say goodness. I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will call out my name Yahweh before you. Yahweh. The, the name Yahweh is, is when God, that's his name in the Old Testament. He would call himself this, this phrase Jehovah, Yahweh. It's Jewish. It's, it's Hebrew. And he gives Moses his name. He says, this is my name. This is who I am. I am the great I am. I am that I am. He reveals himself to Moses. And one of the ways that, that God reveals himself in his glory, in the Old Testament, the glory would sometimes come down like a cloud. Sometimes it would come down like a fire. But in this, cha in this verse, it says that, it says that the glory came down and it passed through like goodness, like the goodness of God. I want everybody to look at me for just a moment. You may have gone through some super difficult times. And I want you to hear this, that God is still good. How come this happened? I don't know. But God is still good. Why did my father... Why did my father die on Christmas? I don't know, but he's still good. Why did my father die of COVID? I don't know, but he was still good. Why, why did this happen to me? I don't know, but God is still good. And the enemy would want to use all the hardships of life to cause you to forget the goodness of God. Listen. One of the misconceptions about God is that a lot of people think that he's distant, that he's if God exists, he's a million miles away somewhere in the heavens. We can't see him. He's inaccessible. He's just watching. He's just watching what happens. He's just an observer of humanity. He's not engaged in our lives. But can I tell you something? There are even some people who, who believe that God is mad at them. And God's just, this is punishment. God is punishing me. And if that were true, we'd all be punished. We'd all be punished. Because we've all done stuff that, that I'd say deserve and merit punishment. Right? Like there's, the Bible says that there's no one perfect. No one. But here's what I want you to know today. It's in spite of your imperfections. In spite of my imperfections and my faults and my failures. In spite of the hardships that I've gone through. The crises that I've gone through. I want you to know this. That doesn't take away from God being good. God never stops being good. In good times... God is good. In bad times, God is good. In peaceful times, God is good. In chaotic times, God is good. In times of abundance, God is good. In times of great need, God is good. In times of joy, God is good. In times of sorrow, God is good. In times of health, God is good. In times of sickness, God is good. Come on, God is good. God is good. He will, he will always be good. Come on, if God has been good to you, give God a praise. Give God a shout of praise. God is good. So good. Stay, stay standing with me. Stay standing with me. Can I give you Bible today? Can I give you Bible? I'm going to go Bible on you. I'm going to go full on Bible on you right now. You ready? I'm going to give you some verses to talk about the goodness of God. Check this out. Listen to what Psalms 27 verse 13 says. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalms 31 19. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. Psalms 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Psalms 107 verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Psalms 119, verse 68 says this, You are good, and you do good. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in Him. I love this verse, Lamentations 3, 25, and 26. It says, The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Come on, if you believe that God is good, give him one more praise right there where you're at. So good.
so good. See when I when I when I look at when I look at the worship team and I look at every person on the worship team, starting with my daughter here, I, I see I see what God has done with my daughter, and I say, Man, God is good. And I look at Harvey and I say, Man, God has been good. And I look at John and I say, God has been good. And I look at Courtney, thank God has been good. And when I look at my wife, I say, God is good. And when I look at and I, and I look at everybody and I say, I see the goodness of God. What do you see? Are you seeing your problem? Are you seeing your trial? Are you seeing your trouble? Are you seeing your trauma? Are you seeing your failure? You want to know what I see? I see the goodness of God in this room. I see that because if he hadn't been good to you, you wouldn't be alive. If you hadn't been good to you, some of you wouldn't be married. God is good. Some of you, some of you know you wouldn't be married if God hadn't been good. Because you ain't got the looks to be married. Come on, somebody. God is good. God is so good he blurred the lady's eyes. God is good. Look at your neighbor and say, God is good. Come on, say, God is good. All right, we're almost done here. All right, listen to this. Listen to this. Check this out. This is what God gave me this morning. He, 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 I had to write this down because this is for, for all of us here in this room. Listen to what I'm about to say. This is, this is We're almost done. This is the word God gave me for, for us today. He says, he, and he, he had me write it down. He says, maybe you've experienced the cruelty of humanity and the world. Maybe you've been under constant assault from every which way. Maybe your thoughts are spinning out of control because of the hardship you've gone through today. But today and tomorrow and the rest of our days, know this, that the goodness of God surrounds your life. God is good. He's so good. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We hope you're blessed by today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow our social media platforms in the description below. God bless.